Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds with Motorhome Rehab Ranch and um, here recently on Facebook there's been a lot of talk, threads and what have you about <clears throat> water leaks in the GMC, outside water leaks. Well, and a lot of people have hit a lot of things and it is a serious problem. Let's sit down and talk about this a minute because a couple of, a couple of things. First of all, that roof is made out of solid aluminum, or good, you know, good aluminum, cheap aluminum. The aluminum doesn't leak. It's the perimeter around the edges of the pan and the penetrations, the holes in it, okay? <clears throat> now you treat penetrations and expansion joints differently. When I say expansion joints, this body was designed like an aircraft and it twists, it moves, and the horizontal and vertical seams can't be sealed, shouldn't be sealed, because it allows this big tube to flex, okay? Now, there's, you say, well, I'll just gob it up. Well, there's different kinds of sealants. There's adhesives, there's panel bonds, and there's all kinds of things, and each type of seal needs a different kind of uh, sealant, okay? Now, first of all, let's take the side rails, because this is, to me, I would say more than half of the leaks, 60% of the leaks in a GMC is from the side rails. What do I mean by the side rails? Real quick, it's real simple. It's that rail that runs front to back on your coach, and it's got a cap on each end. The 73s, that's all it was. In the later ones, there's a gutter right here, right? And then there's screws all the way down, okay? Now, say, holy crap, that's a lot of places to leak. Let's just cover that whole thing. Let's just paint it. Let's put stuff on it so it won't leak. Let's, well, let's park it in a glad bag and <laughs> do the same thing. Yeah, we're putting a cover on it. But the problem is, the body flexes. And if you think about the point from here to here, this is a panel, this is a panel, this is a panel. All these panels come together to a cross seam right here. And this whole tube from side to side, when you hit a bump or you go around a swale, the difference or the movement from that point to this point could be an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. I don't know, maybe a half inch. The problem is, <clears throat> this is an expansion joint, okay? Now, there's a groove in this cap piece it fits right into a slot. Fits right into it. <clears throat> and each one of these screws goes right into that slot and is threaded into a hollow extrusion. And what I mean by a hollow extrusion, hey, we got these all figured out. Watch. Hey, I can erase it now. Okay, what I mean by a hollow extrusion, let's do a side cut. Here's the roof. Here's the side panel. And they come up to this hollow extrusion. Runs front and back. Okay? But it's hollow inside. And each one of those screws across that rail is threaded right into that hollow extrusion. So if there's a leak anywhere on those screws, any one of those screws, it goes right into that hollow, and it drops. If the coach is leaning to the back, <coughs> it will drop right at the end of the cabinet, you know, in front of the speaker. In the front, it will drop right behind the driver and past your seats. And if there's a hole anywhere on the inside of the coach along that hollow extrusion, it'll leak there too. So this is very important. So you say, well, why in the heck did they build it this way? 
And this is not simple. This is like, wow, what's complicated? It's because it's a system. Okay? The top of the coach comes down and is riveted to this hollow extrusion. The bottom, there's a groove. that the bottom panel sits up in, inside, bonded in there, okay? And then you have all these screws right along the middle of that visible hollow extrusion. All of this stuff bends, flexes. The cap is sitting on top of this. Let's use our blue. The cap that sits on top of this okay it only attaches at the screw holes right so it floats that cap floats on the coach the sealant that's underneath is a bunch of here red I call it gup and puppy a bunch of goop and puppy that's in here. Actually, we put it right on the top, right along here. And it was originally butyl tape. Had one string of butyl tape, and this cap squished down onto it. Okay? All these screws had no sealant in them originally. So, what we want to do, if, well, no, let me go back. For this is how this system was made. Sealant is butyl tape because it can move a lot, okay, from front to back. The cap is a cover for the sealant. You see what I mean? Because it floats from the middle, it will float. And right here, you can have a lot of movement, okay? I mean, right here. At this point, if it pivoted right in the middle, say it twisted right in the middle, at that pivot point, right there, it can move that way. Okay? Now, the reason it doesn't do any good to slather a bunch of goop in that little valley, okay, is right at that point is where the movement occurs. No matter what you slather over that, it won't have enough elastomer rate to bend to move as much as that floating rail is allowed to move out here in the corners. Okay? So I don't care what you put on it. Eventually, this is your failure point. Right there on the edge of that rail, at the bottom and at the top, it will crack there eventually because that little point right there is the only point that moves. And there's no, there's no elastic that will give that much reliably and stay in the sun and dirt and everything else. It's just not going to happen. Okay? You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right. Now, how do you fix this? This was the system. It was just like, I look at it like uh, you're going to build an aircraft. You go through, you go through time to check things, right? You go through your engine checkouts, your mechanicals, and all this. I think this is a system that, after 40 years, remember they built these things for 15. Really, they said that. Well, after 40 years, this system needs to be renewed. So, what do you do? What do you do? <coughs> First thing. See if I can draw a straight line. Oh, of course not. First thing is take these screws out. Now, these screws are uh, hardened steel machine um, uh, 8-24 or 832s, I think. Torx head. The head will be torx if they're original. 
and it's screwed into high tensile strength aluminum extrusion. Steel against aluminum. You have corrosion. You have electrolysis. So these screws can be a bear up to no way Jose to get out. But you have to take them out. You have to. This rail has to come off to access all the gook and puffy underneath there. It's got to come off. Okay? Here's how to do it. You want to get a Torx tip that fits real snug, good one, clean one, fresh one, new one. You want it on a bar that comes up that you can hit. Boy, that's terrible. With a hammer. Okay? You hit it with a hammer, it'll shake the corrosion loose. And then you want to have a bar about 15 inches long attached to this where you can push down and turn where you have a lot of torque. First thing you do, don't try to take it out. Put it in there, get good purchase to the socket. Good purchase to the socket that means clean it out. Act like this thing's going to kill you. That one screw, it's you against it. You get that thing in there, put the head of the screw in. Put your torques in there, hit it twice with the hammer, maybe three times, and tighten it. Just barely, just get it to move. Just give it torque and tighten it. Then loosen it. Tighten it. Loosen it. Tighten it. Loosen it. Tighten it. Loosen it. Keep working that screw back and forth. If you can get it to move, carefully 